circumstantial faith. That means that when things are going good, we go, yay, God, <clears throat> doing good. Things are going not so good. We're going, where is God? Things go bad enough, we'll say, is there God? And so circumstantial faith tends to go up and down. It's a bit wobbly. And we said that the reason it ebbs and flows is because life ebbs and flows. Therefore, uh, obviously, our faith, if it's built on circumstances, is going to go up and down <coughs> with the circumstances. Now, uh, if you look at it, we said that uh, people who have circumstantial faith, or if we're running our own circumstantial faith, there's two things that interfere with it. Number one is pleasure will interfere with uh, <clears throat> our faith. Uh, <coughs> and one of the reasons it's so pr uh, fragile is because pleasure will erode it over time because... It's just flat out inconvenient <laughs> to have a straight and narrow faith. Sometimes when we're in the pursuit of pleasure, you know, uh, I believe in God, I believe he loves me, <clears throat> go to church every... Whoa, who's that? Hi, honey, <laughs> how are you doing? <laughs> yeah, yes, I'm a Christian too, come on, <laughs> take you for a beer. <laughs> it's inconvenient to walk a straw straight and narrow path <coughs> and so pleasure will take us off <coughs> the pressure will take you off why somewhere along the line you're likely to compromise we looked at some compromises last week so <coughs> this faith is wobbly because life is wobbly and inconsistent this faith is wobbly because pleasure makes faith inconvenient and pressure will cause you to compromise your faith. And we had a good faith until this showed up, something that didn't fit in with our framework of God. But for us as Christians, there is a solid foundation that we build on that doesn't wobble, that keeps us in all circumstances. Uh, <coughs> and it isn't the circumstances around us on a day-to-day -day basis, because some days are good, some days are diamond, and some days are coal. And uh, <coughs> you're old enough to remember that. Don't fake it. Come on. Our faith is not built on circumstances, but on a person. And he said, Peter, that's right. And on that declaration, we're going to build a called out group, an ecclesia. And it was that Jesus Christ was the Son of God. He came to earth. He predicted his own death and predicted his own resurrection. And he allowed himself to be crucified and died. And then he rose just as he said he would. And then he went and partied with three or four, 500 people at a time, just so everybody knew he was alive. And then he went back. And so our faith isn't built on feelings, it isn't built on circumstances, it's built on the fact that Jesus Christ came, walked the earth, died, rose again, and returned. And so those facts keep our faith rock solid. If I were to ask you, what is faith? We handed out cards and everybody wrote down what faith is. We'd have about 150 different uh, definitions. I would like us to narrow that down a bit, and we're going to look at the book of Hebrews and the Hall of Faith in a minute, but uh, <laughs> I want to tell you, first of all, what faith is not, before we talk about what faith, a Christian definition of faith is. Now, <laughs> faith is not a force or some sort of power that you hook up to do stuff for you. We've been told that faith will move a mountain. And so, good. 
And when nobody wasn't looking, we went to the foot of a mountain and tried to move it. <laughs> it didn't move. In fact, it's still there to this day. <clears throat> you waited till no one was around, thank goodness, or it would have been embarrassing. <clears throat> when your mountain wouldn't move, you better try a smaller one. <laughs> went to a smaller mountain and exercised your faith in it. It wouldn't move. And so <clears throat> I got to have some faith. Put a little sand hill in the backyard and tried to move it, and it stayed. Bible says I, if I had faith, I, I could move a mountain. I can't even move a pile of sand. And then, of course, someone comes along and they explain to you, <laughs> you didn't have enough faith. You have to have more faith. You have to have mountain-moving faith. And so, you, okay. <laughs> and we pop a blood vessel in our forehead and a mountain is still there. One of the reasons that doesn't work is because that's not really an accurate understanding of how faith is. It's not a force. There is a power that's available to the Christian, which is mind-bendingly strong, but that's not how you use it. And uh, faith is not this power that we hook into, which uh, takes us and gets to do our bidding. Faith is not a formula. You know, we... Do this, do this, do this, God. So, what's my formula? I go to church three Sundays in a row, help an old lady across the street, read my Bible, request. No answer. You must get the formula wrong. Go to church four Sundays in a row, help two ladies across the street, fast, and request. This is not working. Faith is not a formula. There's more to it than that. And faith is not confidence. In other words, it will happen. Uh, many times, faith <clears throat> expressed is not confidence, it's presumption, and it'll get you into trouble if we do not actually exercise faith properly. So, how do we get from I hope it happens to I have faith it's going to happen, and I have a non wavering faith in the future. The actual reason is not complicated. <clears throat> it is very simple. In fact, it's so simple, <laughs> I wish it was harder than that. No, it's not harder than that. It's very simple for us to walk by faith. Let's talk about <clears throat> how do we get, <clears throat> I hope it happens, to a faith where we know. And uh, there's something between faith, between hope and faith, that energizes it from a desire and a hope to a fact. Uh, I think we could illustrate it this way. Let's say that we're going for lunch on Tuesday. I call you and I say, we're going for lunch on Tuesday and it's <laughs> your turn to pay. But <coughs> I'm just talking to his answering machine. I talk a lot to your answering machine, but talking to his answering machine, now, he may meet me at lunch, and I hope he meets me for lunch, but I can't be sure he's going to meet me for lunch. Something has to happen between I hope he meets me for lunch and we are going to be at lunch for sure. <laughs> One is hoping one is faith or belief in effect. The transaction has to happen between those two things because faith is being sure. Now let's look at the scripture and see how they describe that transaction. Uh, if you want to take it out, it's the red type on the inside fold, and it's number 11, chapter 11 of... <clears throat> Hebrews, this is called the Hall of Faith. Okay, he starts out, now faith is the college, the, the confidence, or faith is the knowledge, or we know that. Our faith knows something. Our faith knows that it's a fact. And it's a fact about something that we hope for. Oh, so there we have faith and hope 
has two different commodities. So to say, I hope God is going to help me, is not the same as knowing God is going to help you. One is faith, one is a hope. Something has to move us uh, to the confidence in what we hope uh, and the assurance about something we do not see yet. So I don't see it. We're not sitting down to eat. And yet I can know for a fact. And what is it? It is, he calls me back and says, I will be there. Promise to be there. Oh, now it's a fact. Now I don't have to hope. Now I know, or in a spiritual sense, we could say, I now have faith in the fact that we are going for lunch. I don't have a lot of faith in the fact that he'll pick up the check, but I at least I have established the non-wavering fact that we are, in fact, going to meet for lunch. Why? Because faith is being sure of something. And the second part of faith is it hasn't happened yet, and we can't see it. And so, in spite of the fact we can't see it, something moved it from, I hope it, to I know it. And that is coming up in this next part of the verse. <clears throat> and this next part is the faith that it said the ancients had. This is what God said, I'm impressed with. By faith we understand the universe was formed at God's command. And again, so what was seen was made out of what was invisible. Here we have faith helping us believe God created the universe from nothing. Now, the problem with that is we often hear we use our faith to bring things about. We believe, therefore it happens. Don't believe, won't happen. So faith is sometimes presented <clears throat> as the energy that brings something about. Walk that out with me before we really look at what the writer of Hebrews says faith is, but I, I don't think you sat down and said, I believe, I believe, I believe in the universe. I believe it's there. <laughs> yes, I made a universe with my faith. <laughs> No, you didn't. And yet he says, by faith, you believe. This faith thing is kind of messy, yet simple, when we use the biblical example. So as we clear this thing up, faith sometimes is presented as, not only do I bring it about, <clears throat> It's a force that I can use to hook up God and convince him to do stuff that I want or I feel I need done. And he will do that because I have faith. That's why you need a formula. Three services, four prayers, help an old lady, and <laughs> he will help. That's faith. Is <laughs> right. <laughs> Wrong answer. <clears throat> okay, let's keep going through this. By faith, we understand the universe, and yet, using that one definition, we, we didn't bring it about because of our faith. Let's see what he has to say about Noah. By faith, Noah, when he warned about the things not seen, In holy faith, in holy fear, he built an ark. <laughs> uh, I typed this myself. <laughs> Somewhere on this page is that phrase. So, by faith, Noah built an ark. If we use that definition of faith, that by faith we bring things about, we would have to change the story of the Bible. 
if our faith brings things about that we influence God to do things, then the story in the Bible should go like this. Noah, Mrs. Noah, and the kids are sitting around the table, and Noah looks out and he says, this place is disgusting. Look at this earth sin all over the place. It is filthy. We need to clean up the earth. I know what. We'll kill them all. Yeah, that's what we'll do. So he goes out. He has evening sacrifice. He's burning a cow and he's talking to God. He's like, I'm looking over the world, God, and it's a mess. I need you to kill them all. Uh, make it rain. Yeah, rain. We'll drown them. I'll build a boat. You make it rain. We'll start again. That's God responding to our faith. God's looking down and he says, well, I really wasn't going to do that, but look at his faith. <laughs> He's got the boys out there building a boat. I kind of feel like I should destroy the earth because that's his faith. I mean, that's how it works. Faith, I respond. Okay, Noah, tell me when you get the boat built. We'll kill them all. Let me know. <clears throat> Surely there's a better definition than that. He goes on by faith. Abraham was called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance. He obeyed and he went even though he didn't know where he was going. So faith is exercised. God goes, hey, Abe, yeah, I know, <clears throat> you're rich. I want you to take all your camels, all your servants, which was enough, by the way, to overpower a city kingdom and wins. He had a lot of servants. And the camels and the donkeys, and <clears throat> he didn't have any cats. <laughs> yeah, no cats. <clears throat> but he had dogs. And everything else. And he said, I want you to take them all and just start going in this direction and don't stop till I tell you to stop. So just go for it. And where am I going? No, don't worry about it. Just go. I'll, I'll uh, tell you when to stop. And quit complaining. I saw how many camels you have. Just get, get going. <clears throat> so, all right, guys, get her up, pack her up. And he went, not knowing why, where, or when he was going to stop. Why? He had faith. He had faith. Boy, I'm telling you, that's kind of shaky. Now, whose idea was the flood and the ark? That was God's idea. Whose idea was it that Abraham packed up his thousand camels and sheep and kids and servants and start going until God told him to stop. Whose idea was that? This stuff seems to be not man telling God what to do, but it seems to be God saying what's going to happen and them having faith to believe. Amen. And where is the energy for this faith coming from? By faith, I have seen it. By faith, I made it home. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Oh, 13. I, I put that verse in. <laughs> Listen to this. All these people who had this faith, they were still living by faith when they died. They hadn't received the things, what's that word? Oh, their faith was based on something that God promised them. They saw them and welcomed them from a distance, but because God had promised it, they had faith. To Noah, the promise was, build an ark, get in it, I'm going to make it rain. Noah said, I can't swim, build in a boat. Abraham, take off. I've got something over here for you. I'm packing as you speak. I believe what you promised me will come about. I have faith 
in your word. Now, we're getting close to faith. Here, rather than Abraham deciding he's going to move, take everything over there, and ask God to bless him, God says, I have a blessing over there if you have the faith. Abraham says, I do. Besides, i got so many servants, I don't have to pack anything anyway. <laughs> it's just, put me on a camel. I'll meet you at the camp tonight. It's nice to be rich. There's another illustration here. <clears throat> uh, the first one that we talked about where we think that we can make God do stuff is presumption. It's not faith. And sometimes we hold God accountable for our assumption. You didn't do what I was praying about. No, if I had it, you'd have killed yourself. We may hold him accountable, but that's not faith. Our faith and belief system is built on the promises and the Word of God. The immutability of the character of God. Life can go up and down. But God is the same yesterday, today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen. Nothing changes. That you can have faith in. It's not going anywhere. So let's define faith. Faith is confidence that God is who he says he is, and he will do what he promised to do. Our faith is in a person, not in circumstances. Circumstances go up and down. God is rock solid. Faith is confidence that God is who he said he is, and he will do what he said he will do. That's biblical faith. That's what moved Noah. That's what moved Abraham. That's what moved the uh, people in the hall of faith. Faith is not believing you can talk God into something. Faith is knowing where God wants you to go and being there because you believe he is there. Amen. There was an interesting story, and I love this one, uh, because Jesus was always breaking rules and ticking everybody off. And he, I think he did this just to irritate people. Luke chapter 5, it says, <laughs> this guy come up to him, and he didn't have leprosy. He was serious in the leprosy. He was overcome with leprosy. And if you've seen some, they get scabby, they get infection, a little smelly, a little gangrene here and there. And, uh, <clears throat> of course, they're outcasts, and they don't shower because their arm will fall off. So they are pathetic wretched looking sight this guy comes up to Jesus which he shouldn't have done he's not allowed to be around other people he has to call out unclean 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 he has to stay on the other side of the road he has to stay away from people nobody can touch him nobody can go near him <clears throat> he's been alone most of his life and it's progressed and it's just you can't make a living so you go into poverty and you die that's the later stages of leprosy. But he comes up to Jesus and he says, if you will, if you want to, you can heal me. His faith was in a man. I know who you are. I know what you can do. And if you want to, you are the Christ, the Son of God, and you can look after this leprosy. What did Jesus do? He reached out and he touched the guy. You weren't allowed to touch a leper. The Pharisees said so. And they knew everything. Jesus touched him. Why? He loved the guy. He was a child of God. He had had Satan's worst done to him. And he said, I do want to be healed. <laughs> Hands. Pharisees, yeah. <laughs> 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 he
he wanted to do it. That means for us, <clears throat> our faith is in God, our Father, and we know that he can do anything. <clears throat> if he says yes, he is God. If he says, let's wait a little while on this, he is God. If he says, no, that's not in anybody's best interest, he's still God and you're not. But you can come to him knowing he can do anything he wants. Last week, is anything too hard for God? The answer is no. He can do it. And you go to move a mountain, it better be a mountain that God wants moved, or it's not going anywhere. Uh, excuse me. I need that mountain there. I'm changing the weather in Hawaii, where the pastor's going to retire. Just leave it there. Don't be messing with my mountains. Sometimes he sees a bigger picture than us. Therefore, because he's God, he says no. And it is always a good no. We talked about this a few weeks ago. You had the worst thing ever happen to you. You knew your life was over. It would never be the same. Life was going to be in the basement, and you're down there digging holes, but... Three years later, best thing ever happened to you. And he didn't come and rescue you. He walked you through it. Why? He's God. If he says yes, he's God. If he says wait, he's God. If he says no, he's still God. That we know. Because Jesus Christ came, foretold his death and his resurrection. Then he allowed himself to be crucified. He waited till he died. Then he got up again, and he says, put your faith here. People ask me about this in the Old Testament, that in the Old Testament, whatever, whatever, whatever. Jesus kind of validated the Old Testament. The next guy that walks on water dies and brings himself to life. I'm following. But until then, it's Jesus that I have faith in. Your life will get good. Your life will get bad. But we don't have circumstantial faith. We have faith in Jesus Christ. And faith that God, out of nothing, made the universe. <laughs> if you want to bend your brain, watch uh, Neil, whatever his name is. He had about 12 or something scientists from each field, and they explained how something came out of nothing. I think it's easier to just believe God. <clears throat> and... <laughs> I, I watched uh, Stephen Hawkins. I watched it, and then I watched it again. Then I called Aaron in, watch this with me, as he explained how something came from nothing. What did he just say? Well, there was this huge negative force and this huge positive force, which is nothing. Wait, 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 wait! A huge force and a huge force is not nothing. The fact that it equals zero is not the same as nothing. God created the universe, and I believe that, and I will stake my life on it. And I will stake my life on the fact that Jesus came, lived, died, rose again, and is coming back for me someday.